when I was around eight or nine years old, I had an encounter with what I would later come to believe as an extraterrestrial being. One night, I woke up in the middle of the night. Uh, the blanket was covered over my head. I had a blue, it was a blue blanket. You know, I can recall this. It's like one of these things that it seems like it happened yesterday. It was, it was such a memorable thing. It was such a, uh, one, it's one of those things in life that you just never forget. Like when there's something big happens in your life, it seems like you always remember, you know, everything that was going on. You remember little details. Like there's things that just never escape your memory. This was one of those things. Okay, I was eight or nine. I woke up in the middle of the night. I, I used to sleep in the attic. I, there was it was a small row house on on. I slept on one side of the attic, and my brother Davy slept on the other side. And uh, there was a, a steps leading up into the attic in the middle, and uh, and a banister surrounding those steps. Well, <clears throat> I woke up, blanket over the head. We used to sleep with the light on in the attic for some reason. There was this big light on the top of the. Right, right at the top of the steps, and it illuminated the entire room. So I woke up in the middle of the night, and I could hear this electronic humming sound. Like mm, it was constant during this entire experience. This humming sound. It was very, very strange. It sounded like nothing I ever heard before or since. And uh, I could see the shadow of this three-fingered hand. I used to I call it a claw because it was claw like. It actually had like the the fingers were thick. It was only thread. This thing only had three fingers, and they were thick at the base, and they 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 almost came to points at the tip, and it, and it was moving toward my head. I could see the shadow getting close to my head, and then further away. It was like a a three fingered hand. You could see you could see it a thin arm, and it was moving closer to my head and further away. Uh, needless to say. I was scared out of my mind. I mean, I was petrified. I, I, I'm, I'm asking, you know, who's there? Wh who's there? You know, and the whole time this hand just keeps moving closer to my face. It was like ritualistically, like, like, uh, you know, moving closer and then further away to where, where my head was underneath the blanket. I could see the, you know, the shadow. It was, and, and I'm scared out of my mind. And the whole time you hear this humming sound. Mm -hmm constant unchanging so i'm trying to figure out what's going on here you know i'm like whoa you know you know who's there no, nothing's that's and nothing's there's no response it's just like something's way out of the ordinary going on here I, you know i i it's i'm scared beyond belief i don't know what to do i'm afraid to pull the blanket down to see what this is i don't want to see what it is i think it's a deal is this is this a demon you know i don't know the only thing I did was I peeked out of the blanket across the room, away from the, where the shadow of this hand was coming toward my, my face. I, I, I peeked across the room where my brother Davy was, and he was laying in bed, and he was sound asleep. I started yelling to, to, toward him. He, he wouldn't wake up. The humming sound was, like, muffling my voice somewhat. You know, I'm yelling, and I'm really scared now. So I start screaming for my mom and dad, yelling for a while, you know, the whole time. I'm laying under this blanket with the blanket over my head, the shadow of this hand getting closer and then further away, closer and further away. What is it? I don't know. Humming sound. I don't know. Totally petrified. Nobody's coming. My, there's, uh, you know, despite all the yelling and hollering and carrying on, they're not coming. So I'm just laying there. I'm just watching this thing. I'm just, I don't know what to do. I'm petrified. Uh, at, at some point, I'm, I mean, I'm on the verge of tears. That's how scared I am. I don't know what this thing is. I don't want to pull the blanket all the way down over, uh, from my head because then I would see it. You know, I don't want to see this thing. I, don't, I think it's some demon or the devil maybe. Um, I mean, this whole, it was insane, insanely scary. I cannot begin to tell you how scared I was. And this whole thing, it lasted like 20 minutes. I'm laying there. It got to the point, you know, I just started praying. I started praying over and over, different prayers, and and would close my eyes and open them back up again. The shadow's still there. This whole thing it, it went on for like twenty minutes. You know, mm, three fingered hand getting closer, further away, closer, further away, closer, further away. Sound. Twenty minutes screaming, trying to get someone to help me. Nothing happens. And next thing you know. 20 minutes, that, that, this whole thing lasted 20 minutes. Next thing you know, I, somehow I fell asleep or something. 
And then it was, a ne I woke up the next day. Well, of course, you know, now this wasn't a dream. Let's make that clear. I know the difference between a dream. I've had some dreams that are very realistic, but you still know that, th that it was a dream. I was awake. Okay. Let's make this clear right now. You know, I've been telling this story for years, for years. And, you know, oh, it was only a dream. In fact, that's what I was told that day. Of course, when I went downstairs that morning, I talked to my mom and I told her what happened. You know, I was, mom, this is what happened. I told her the whole story. She insisted it was a dream. I'm telling you, it wasn't a dream. I mean, I went on arguing for, for 15 minutes until it got to a point where I realized, you know, she's not going to believe me. I mean, I, I'm just a kid. Nobody's going to believe me. Although I did tell other people when my dad got home from work that day, I told him it was a dream, he says. It wasn't a dream. I was wide awake. It was very scary. Now, at this point in my life, you know, eight or nine, so this was, you know, uh, this would have been in, you know, 1977, 76 or 77 when this happened, somewhere around there, one of those, one of those years. Now, at the time, I, I, you know, I grew up a Catholic. You know, I went to church every week. And in fact, I was an altar boy for 10 years from, you know, when I was in sec from second grade all the way till I graduated high school from the seven to 17, the age of seven to 17. So, and of course, you know, I, I, as a Catholic, you, you believe in heaven and hell and, you know, you have a concern with, with demons and Satan. And that's what I thought it was, you know. For years after that incident, like I would bring it up every now and then and tell tell somebody, and you know they would say, "Oh, it's only a dream. It wasn't a dream. I was wide awake. There was some presence in the room. There was something in the room that had a hand that only had three fingers, uh, and it was moving closer and further away to my head. And there was some sort of electronic sound, like a humming sound, you know, the entire time." It was unbelievably scary, the whole thing. I, but after that happened, I mean, I for years, at least it was more than 10 years, I went on just, you know, believing that it must have been something satanic. Like maybe some demon came from hell to try to, uh, you know, steal my soul or, you know, something. That's what I thought, something to that level. I, I, I you know, it just, you know, it never occurred to me that it might be something else. I mean, in fact, when I would think about this over that, during that time, for those years after, afterward, I mean, I would try to block it out. I would try to, you know, I didn't want to think about it. It was just so, one of those things that I knew happened. And sometimes I would try to pretend maybe it didn't happen. Maybe I, maybe, you know, maybe I'm, you know, but no, no, it happened. I, and I was awake. It wasn't a dream. You know, it wasn't one of those, you know, you have a dream, you wake up. This wasn't one of those things where I woke up. Oh my God, thank God it was only a dream. No, that wasn't, that's not what this was. I was laying there. This was going on. This lasted 20 minutes. I was screaming for help. Nobody's coming. There's a shot. I can see that. I know there's something out there. There's some being out there. Whatever it is, I don't know what it looks like. I never, because I never pulled a blanket down, right? I never, I, I, I just didn't have the courage to do that. There was no courage there whatsoever. I, I mean, I was scared shitless, okay? And I, I just never, I did not want to see with this. I, as far, you know, as far as I was concerned, this thing was from hell. And it wanted to do, it wanted to take my soul to hell or whatever, something to that effect. That's what I thought at the time and for years afterward. Never had the courage to look at it, whatever it was. All I could tell you is that it had like a thin arm, and it had some sort of a palm, and three, long, three thick at the, at the base fingers that, and 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 when they went to the, and they came to almost points, almost points, not quite. Not quite points, but close to it. It was rounded at the ends, at the ends of the fingers, but it was, you know, it came to almost a point, and it was. I could see the shadow of it very clearly through this thin blue blanket that I was using. Okay, that was over my head. It was there. There was something there, and also there was the sound, the electronic sound, the unexplainable electronic sound. Right, there was something there. So years go by, and of course, like I said, I think it's demonic. And then it must have been sometime in the late 1980s where I saw something on, on television with regard to alien abductions and, and what people were describing there. And then all of a sudden, a bell went off in my head. Ding, 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 ding. That's what it was. That's what it was. 
that 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 was a better explanation than some demon from hell. I mean, why would a demon from hell want to come after some kid who's an altar boy who who goes to church every Sunday and you know is you know tries his best to be as you know the, the best he could be? I mean, it just didn't make any sense. But now it started making sense. Oh, this had nothing to do with anything like that. It had to do with aliens, extraterrestrials. You know, just like these people were talking about on TV that I saw in some documentary. I don't know what it was, you know, but there was people on TV, some show. I don't know what it was. You know, I, I might not have realized at that moment it was it, it took a course. It was a course of thoughts like, hmm, you know, and then I real then I finally, you know, that's one of my, my my mindset on that whole incident changed and it's stayed changed ever since all these years later. That's I firmly believe that whatever this thing was was an extraterrestrial now growing up you know i you know i saw all these move in the 70s throughout the 1970s i saw you know i would watch movies like earth versus the flying saucers you know uh war of the worlds movies with aliens coming to earth and attacking us or you know the day the earth stood still you know things like that invasion of the body snatchers the original one uh you know, in the seventies, growing up, you, uh, invaders from Mars. Okay, there was all these movies with extraterrestrials in it, but you know, when, every time those movies to me, as even as a kid, when I saw these kind of movies or these kinds of TV shows, I thought for sure that you know this is, I mean, this was all a Hollywood creation. I I never thought that I never knew watching these movies that uh, the reason they start making these movies was because in the late nineteen forties, people start seeing flying saucers. I didn't uh, realize that uh, that actual sightings of actual saucers in the sky was what caused them to start making these movies. I never knew that at the, during that whole time. It wasn't until like the very late seventies or 1980, you know, and I was watching a TV show, uh, this old show TV show in search of with that Leonard Nimoy is the host where there was an episode on about, uh, possible, uh, UFOs being real and, you know, possibly crashing and, you know, and maybe there was dead extraterrestrial bodies, you know, something, one of these shows, I just, but I, you know, apparently there was, there was an episode where people talked about, uh, you know, seeing aliens, but it still, it didn't, I didn't think about that then. It wasn't until years later when I saw these shows about abduction. Um, however, when I saw these, you know, this episode, uh, I, I was stunned. I, I, was like, I never knew that. I was like, oh, I didn't know that that was, you know, this was possible. That I, you know, as far as I thought, when I saw those movies, you know, War of the Worlds and uh, Earth versus the Flying Saucers, I, 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 you know, I just thought it was all, you know, Hollywood concoction. I thought it was just as fantastical as The Wizard of Oz. I mean, you know, I love those kind of movies, you know. I watched monster movies, science fiction. I thought they were all great, but I didn't think that any of them were real. You know, as a kid, I was, you know, that's that's what was my that was my mindset back then. But then at some point, you know, like I said, I realized it was sometime in the late eighties, and okay, my mindset changed. This thing was whatever this was. I know it was real. I, I'm the only one who knows this because I'm the only one who experienced it. My brother Davey, who was on the other side of the room that night, he never woke up. I don't know. He, I, I was screaming my head off toward him. He, he just laid there. It was like he was, you know, completely conked out, you know, for whatever reason. There was, I didn't say, the light was on. The, the whole room was illuminated. There was nothing standing near his bed, but there was something by my bed, right? There was something there, and it was some electronic humming sound. Uh, why was it there? What was it doing? What did it do? What happened? How did I all of a sudden, like, I pass out when I'm in the middle of being in unbelievably terrified you know and when i woke up the next day it wasn't like you know i woke up from a, <gasps> oh that was a terrible dream no it wasn't like that like you know you you know when you're sleeping time passes and then you wake up no, no. It, 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 when, when this event was going on i was wide awake like i said this lasted for like 20 minutes i was scared out of my mind for 20 minutes and then somehow i conked out what happened after that i don't know uh i don't think i want to know but what i do know is that there was something there that was other world, otherworldly, okay. And now, of course, ten years or more than ten years probably went by when I was thinking that this thing was demonic. That's I don't believe that no more. But I do believe that whatever was there was extraterrestrial. Because let me say this: 
years later, in 1990, let's fast forward to the year 1994, on a fishing trip in August of 1994, I saw, I saw a UFO, you know, and here's another day, another day that you don't forget, you never ever forget, because it was such a big, big, big day. Such a big day because when someone, when you have an event like this, uh, you don't forget the details of that day. Okay, you just don't. You remember all the little details then. When when something uh, major happens in your life, you don't forget anything. Okay, so 1994, I get a call from my friend Scott. He tells me that he asked me if he wants, wants to go fishing. I was like, Yeah, I'll go fishing with you. He wants to go night fishing. Okay, now let me throw this out here. I went fishing with Scott many times in my life back in those days. I don't hardly, I don't, I barely remember any of those little those times, but I do remember this. I remember all the events of this one. All the, all, you know, um, this is what happened. He calls me up. He says, "Look at, uh, there's this little uh, private lake called Beach Mountain Lakes. It's a private community. It's a gated community. You know, it's like a people live in the woods. You know, in this around this lake, they have houses around this lake. He wants to go fishing in this little pond off the lake, basically in the middle of nowhere. And he got permission to go in here. Uh, his his mom knew somebody that lives there, and they gave her permission to let him go fishing at that pond. He wanted to you know try that. He wanted to go fishing at this pond. So I said, Yeah, I'll go. Right, I'll go. So. He uh, calls me up. I said, yeah, okay, I'll be ready. He picks me up like, I don't know, you know, in this pickup truck about 5 o'clock or so, 4.30, 5 o'clock. It's, you know, it's August 1994. So it's now this place, this Beach Mountain Lakes, it's in Luzerne County, not Schuylkill County. It's about, this place was probably about 40, 45 minutes away from where I, I lived at the time. So he picked me up. We drove into Hazleton, and that was the first day I was ever at a Walmart because we went to Walmart before we went to this place to get bait. And, and other stuff, other equipment and snacks and whatnot. So we stopped at Walmart. <clears throat> I remember I bought some warms and some other things, some drinks and whatnot. And uh, we go to this uh, place. We drive outside of past Hazleton and uh, we go to this Beach Mountain Lakes and a guard, he talks to a guard. I don't know what he said to him, but then the guard let us in. So we go, you can see the lake there. Oh, you know, it was off to the left and it was a pond off to the, to the right of this lake. So it was still bright out when we got there. We're just starting to, you know, it's getting dusk, you know. And anyway, we go fish. We're fishing at this place. And basically <clears throat> the pond, okay, we're, we're at the pond. Uh, now behind, the, behind us, uh, you know, the pond's in front of us. Behind us, there's this field of tall grass. And then uh, on the perimeter of that, there's, uh, there's, some, there's forest, the woods that we love, you know, an area where we just drove from to get in, in there. Right. And then off to the off to the left is a little bit more clear, but there's trees. And somewhere right behind there was the highway, I guess. So we're fishing at this place for for hours. I mean, it's you know, we're not catching anything, but we're talking, we're having a good old time. You know, it's that's the great thing about fishing. You know, it's a you know, you go, it's basically very relaxing. You're outdoors, you're you know, you're just having fun. You know, so we're fishing for hours, but we're not catching anything. He's moving all over the place trying to find a spot maybe where he might get a bite. I mean, I I don't remember getting a bite all night long. And anyway, well, it's around 10 o'clock at night, and I turn around to get something out of my tackle box, okay? And, you know, and I could see that behind me, of course, was that field, and I see these three gigantic lights, like in a line, right? behind the trees, moving behind the trees into this one area uh, where it was clear, clearer, right? And these gigantic, and this, they had these giant spotlights. They're like headlights, but a little, much larger, you know, in a line, like in, there was a space between between each light, like in a, in a straight line, basically. It must have been, I'd say about 40 feet across, you know, one light at the one end, the light in the middle and the light at the end. They were gigantic spotlights. And I said, this, and the thing got from behind the trees and then started moving toward us. Right, it was right there, right, and it wasn't wasn't that it was actually lower than the trees at first when it was behind the trees, and then it came from behind the trees, and then it would start floating, coming right toward us, floating right toward us, and it was only two and a half stories off the ground. You know, I said to Scott, I said you know, he's he wasn't paying attention. I said, Scott, what's that? And he turned around. This is exactly how he said when he saw what he saw. This is exactly I said, Scott, what's that? And this is exactly what he said when he saw that. He said, I don't know, right. So the thing comes almost right. 
right in front of us. I mean, and it's only like two and a half stories off the, off the ground. There's absolutely no sound coming from this thing. This thing is, like I said, it's 40, 40 feet across at least, right? It's big. It's huge. I, now, I couldn't make out the shape of it because these uh, there was some shape there. You could see some darkness, right? You, you knew there was an object, but you just couldn't make out the shape because those bright lights in the front of this that were pointing right toward us were so bright. Right. And again, it's only two and a half stories off the ground. I mean, it's and then it stopped in midair, right, like almost above us. Just just uh, if you moved, would have moved a couple more feet, it would have been above us. Well, anyway, Scott's standing underneath it, shining the flashlight at it. I'm scared out of my mind thinking this thing's going to land. I mean, by, by this point, 1994, like I said, I had come to the conclusion in the late 1980s that that thing that was in my bedroom way back in, what, circa 1976, 1977, was an alien. I didn't want to, you know, stand around seeing what this thing was going to do. I thought it was going to land, and who knows when the next thing will be getting dragged inside the spaceship, and who knows what they're going to do. So I'm like, Scott, let's get the hell out of here! So... We start throwing all this fishing stuff in the back of his truck. Meanwhile, the thing starts moving in another direction, backward, toward the trees, in a different direction, but not, not in the same direction where it just came, but in a different direction, almost like a triangular. It, 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 the way it came out almost moved like in a triangular fashion. And it started moving silently, no noise whatsoever, nothing, nothing, right? Nothing. It was real. It was unbelievable. The fear, you know, what is this thing? It was incredible. When you see something like this, the fear, the awe, all of it, it was incredible. I can't tell you, begin to tell you the feelings I had and to see this thing and the light coming from it. It was spectacular. And it was there and it was real. And you knew, you knew when you saw this, this was not man-made. No way was this thing man-made. Not even close. Not even close. It was not, it could not have been made by man. Not like something like this. It was unbelievable unbelievable to see something like this in the middle of the night in the middle of nowhere in the middle of nowhere what was it doing there i don't know maybe it was gonna maybe these things have to get water maybe it was gonna go to that pond and they figured nobody would be there and all of a sudden they find two yoho standing there fishing and then oh we better get out of here they saw us who knows i'm just guessing i don't know but anyway we throw everything in the back of the pickup truck right and head out to the dirt road basically in a direction toward where this thing was just flying Right, we're just we're gonna get out of there after seeing this. Like we're we're scared, okay. I'm scared. I, I'm sure Scott is too, right? So we're flying down this dirt road like like wildly, you know, in the pitch dark. We had to stop because the direction where this thing was going, uh, all of a sudden there was all these deer. I had to be like twenty. We had to sit there waiting while like about twenty deer were running away from where this thing had just was was floating into. We we're in the woods now. This thing had to be in that same area. These deer were running away from that, running across, the, you know, in front of his truck. So we had to stop and wait for that. So then we got out of this place and we we drove into Hazelton and we went to some coffee shop. Okay, and. Uh, we were shocked. We weren't even talking. We were so stunned. Like, like the, the, the drip out of there was like there was no talking. There was no talking. We were like both of us were like in shock, and it was there was we were in stunned silence. But then we finally got to this coffee shop, and I remember we went in, and we both were getting coffee, and and we we're sitting down at a table, and I and I I said to Scott, I said Scott, that was a UFO. That was a UFO. And he's there, and the first his first reaction is, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. I, I, that's because he know. The stigma and everything else that, you know, if he, if you go telling people something like this, they're going to think you're nuts. You know, that's the stigma that we have around the, uh, the subject of UFOs. But this thing was so real. I mean, it was there. I mean, I mean, I, if you saw something like this up close, you you would be, it was mesmerizing. I mean, it's just the memory of it so strong. You can still see the way the, way the lights were, were coming off this thing. I mean, it was amazing. Giant headlights, three of them in a row. In the right above our heads, no sound, zero sound. You could still hear the crickets. You know, it was unbelievable, unbelievable, but it was real. It really happened. It really, really happened. And it's because of reasons like this that I'm fascinated by UFOs and I'm really, really, really thrilled about the idea that the Pentagon's starting to, you know, come clean on, on that they don't know. They're, yeah, there's stuff out there. We don't know what it is. I'm still, you know, a little bit perplexed on, uh, you know, why the media is just not catching on to this. I mean, they're basically telling you, they're saying, well, uh, 
you know, there's there's some you know, maybe it's Russia or maybe it's China. No, it's not. No, it's not. They don't got this. There's this kind of stuff has been going on for years. It's not just Air Force and 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 Pentagon people and, and military people that see these things. It's a lot of people. There's so many people out there that have experiences. I had experiences. I'm telling the people right now in this recording. I'm telling you. You know, this stuff is, is real. It's been real for a long time. Do the research. The media, you need to do the research. I mean, we're being visited by extraterrestrials. They must be. Either that or they're interdimensional. I don't even want to go there. That's even more complex, complicated. But let's they're, they're not from here. There's, there's beings here that are smarter than us that have uh, uh, machines that do things that our machines can't do. Incredible things, maneuvers in the sky. They could fly in the air. They could go and then just disappear in the ocean. We don't have thought things like this. And that thing that I saw back in 1994, you know, there was no way. I mean, this thing was huge, and it was right there, only two, two and a half, maybe three stories at most off the off the ground, right? And it was right there, and there was no sound right in front of my face. It was unbelievable. But it was real. It was real. And 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 the incident when I was a kid, there was something in my room. And I don't think it was human. There was something there. I know I wasn't having a dream. There was something there. Okay. Now, this experience is... There's other people who have uh, a lot more detailed experiences about interactions with aliens. That's all I could tell you. I, don't, I didn't even see this thing. I just saw the shadow of its hand, but I know it was there. And I know what that hand was not... Nothing like I've ever seen before. Anyhow, there's a report coming out in June from, from the Pentagon to Congress that is going to uh, talk about and provide some more information on these unidentified flying objects or what they're calling them, uh, UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena. And uh, you know what? Whatever they're coming out with, it's not going to be enough. I know that there's a faction in the government that knows more than what the Pentagon's going to be telling us. I, I think it's time that it's time to for our government to rip the band-aid off, tell us everything they know. Everything. Let us know everything. There's a lot of people out there that want some more answers, even if the answers lead to more questions. But what do you got? What do you got? Bring it on. Come on. We're ready. We're ready. Well, those two incidents that I talked about personally, they were there was, another, there was another third incident, which was very strange. I'm not going to get into that today. It was an incident that happened in Hawaii, and it's, it's all much different than those first two uh, incidents that I talked about. But I will talk about that incident in a future uh, podcast. Anyway, thank you for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time.